What do you call two spiders who just got married? Newlywebs. <laughs> Absolutely awful. And oh, don't forget, comment your dad jokes down below. Right, so hello again everybody and welcome back. It's finally here, the third gen Fire TV Cube. And this video is basically taking a look at it. See what we get, see how it looks, see how it performs. And is it any good? Right, so that being said, don't forget to hit that subscribe button. And let's crack on. Right, so first of all, what I will ask is comment down below. Is a third gen Fire TV Cube something you'd be interested in? Is it something you've purchased? And what's your thoughts about it? Right, so first of all, let's take a quick look at what we get inside the box. As you can see, obviously, we get the Fire TV Cube. And then we get the plug, so the power adapter. And then we get the remote. And let me tell you something. The paper that that remote was wrapped in, surely it shouldn't be that hard to get off. But as you can see, we get the remote with a couple of added buttons. So as you can see, that's everything we get inside the box, batteries included, but no HDMI cable. Amazon are getting a bit tight, aren't they? <laughs> if we put the third gen Fire TV Cube next to the second gen, as you can see, I prefer this fabric that the new Fire TV Cube is wrapped in. The glossy finish was nice, but I do really like the new design. And if we turn them around, you can see there's quite a few parts that have been added. So as you can see, we've got a USB 2.0, we've got an Ethernet port, we've got a HDMI in, a HDMI out, we've got an IR extended, and then we've also got the power. Now, it is good to see that Amazon have put a full-size USB on the back of this. For anybody wondering, it is a USB 2.0 port. And then the Ethernet port is another nice thing to see because we had to use an adapter previously. And something a lot of people are talking about is it is capped to 100 megabits per second download speeds. Now, for me, that's more than enough. I'm happy with that. But many people wish it was a gigabit Ethernet port. Let me know your thoughts in the comments below. So if we put that next to the second gen Fire TV Cube, you can see it makes that look pretty bare. And I do, I really like the new design. The remote is pretty much standard. We have got a couple of new buttons being added on there. And they've also got this HDMI in port. And this one's interesting because I'm not sure a lot of people are going to use this, but... You could use it for a cable box or another device you've got and then run that through the HDMI in and then only have one HDMI cable running to your TV. Not sure a lot of people are going to use that though. But all in all, love the look of it. It's heavier than I did expect as well. And let's get it started up. Another thing that might be worth mentioning as well is on the top of the Fire TV Cube, we've got four different buttons, obviously volume and then a pairing button. And a lot of people do ask what this button's for with the line through it, and that's to mute so she doesn't listen to you. So if you've got more than one device in there, that'll stop it being picked up. So when we start it up, as you can see, it looks exactly the same as any Amazon device. It's got the same interface. If I go to the left, we can see an inputs button has been added or an input option. And this is where you can select the HDMI port, so the HDMI in. I've not got nothing plugged into there, but as you can see, that's how you'd select it. Now, there's no point in me going through everything like I do with a full review of a brand new device because it's the same as any other Amazon device, just with higher specs. So we can expect it to be faster. We can expect it to perform well. And then obviously, there's all the added features on the box itself. If I quickly just open up YouTube, as you can see here, we're playing some 4K video, and the playback is brilliant. It, it's very smooth, there's no choppiness around the edges, and it, it plays back really well. It's fast. I'll skip through as you can see there. Something that has been added to the 3rd Gen Fire TV Cube, if I go across to Settings, to Display and Audio, and I'm going to go to Display, at the bottom, what you're going to see is Super Resolution, and this is Upscaling. So it automatically improves the resolution for a sharper picture. Now we did see this with the Nvidia Shield. That's got 4K upscaling. So it tries to improve the image or the, the stream that you're watching. But it is only in supported apps. And like I said, everything about it when you start it up, it's the same as any other Amazon device pretty much. But you can expect it to be faster. But I will be doing a comparison test between 
the third gen and the second gen fire tv cubes and see if there's much of a difference between the two and also two new buttons that have been added on the remote if we can get it to focus is we've got a settings button and an app draw button now if we quickly just jump over here if i click the settings button this brings up the same feature as what you used to long hold the home button for i wish that took you straight to the actual settings though that'd make things much smoother but the other button is the recent apps button if i click on that it's going to show you what you've opened up recently now this could be quite useful but i wish they added an option to force stop an app from here so as a lot of us know apps running in the background can slow a device down and the nvidia shield you can actually close apps the same way but amazon show us recent apps but there's no way to close it but it is a step in the right direction so that's the third gen fire tv cube we could go more in depth about it but i'm going to make videos in the near future of different features that have been added one downfall could be the price at the moment it's 140 pound which is quite expensive but with any amazon device we always wait because they go on sale quite regular and we might see it drop to around 70 pound which that'll be an absolute steal for this device amazon have also released um, the fire tv remote pro so with the third gen fire tv cube it ships with this remote we've just shown but you can upgrade and i think it's an extra like 35 pound on top of the 140 so that becomes very very expensive but it is an option i suppose and if we take a quick look at the voice remote pro as you can see it is 34.99 so 35 pound and this is what it looks like it, it does look a bit more premium granted but what you can see is we're missing the recent apps button the quick keys at the bottom are now just blacked out so i'm guessing you can assign whichever app you want to those buttons which is quite good because with this remote obviously you get the keys that set you can change them with a button mapper but it's a bit of a ball ache you've got a headphone button at the top there but let me know in the comment section down below if the pro remote would be something you'd get or do you think you're just wasting your money and if it's something that appeals to you this also has wi-fi 6e which obviously the second gen doesn't have and for anybody wondering it comes with two gigabyte of ram and 16 gigabyte of internal storage now a lot of people were hoping they would up that but those numbers stay the same but all in all let me know your thoughts in the comment section down below what do you think to this device i think it looks a lot better than the previous version i do like that they've added a lot more parts on the back but like i said usb 2.0 and 100 megabits per second download ethernet a lot of people are going to be grumpy about that but i do think it's a good device right so sorry for keeping you i'll see you in the comments down below i hope you enjoy the rest of your day don't forget to hit that subscribe button as well and i'll see you soon Ta -da!